Perfect. Uh, I'm back. Uh, so, you know, the few questions in the chat box, uh, which I'll take, and then, uh, uh, you know, uh, we'll, we'll move forward. I feel that we might extend uh, beyond the three hours, but that's okay. I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, uh, I'm able to share uh, as much knowledge with uh, all of you as I can and make sure that uh, you are at least able to uh, get the sense of how to use TradingView. Now, how you end up using it might be very different from uh, how I use it or somebody else uses it, but at least you'll uh, get a sense of uh, what the tools are, uh, what are the things that you can do with it, and then decide on the best way to use it for yourself. So uh, here is uh, where we are, and this see on your screen. Uh, I'll come back to strategy and indicators, but let me just take a few graphs. What do the graphs indicate in the strategy tester? So good question. Uh, so let's take a look at this. Now, this is the graph that you see. So basically what you're seeing over here is if I started with an equity of 500,000, uh, I think it is 500,000 or five. Okay, it's 500,000. How does my equity curve move? So that 5, uh, 500,000 went up to 650,000 before it started falling. Okay, so depending on the strategy, so this is probably the 23rd trade. So the, at the bottom, you can see the uh, trade number. So the 23rd trade from the first to the 23rd trade, your $500,000 uh, or rupees, whatever, went up to 650,000 uh, rupees. And then it started falling from there. This particular shaded purple area, it shows uh, how it has started falling. Okay, so if, uh, you know, uh, it starts from this particular side over here. So these are the losses that you've made, or rather, uh, you know, the right term to use is drawdown. What is the drawdown that you're seeing in your portfolio? So you went to a peak of 650,000, but you lost about 75,000 across one or multiple trades. So in this particular case, you can actually look at each of the trades. So this trade gave you a loss of suppose 19,000 and your equity moved from 650 to whatever, minus uh, 20,000, whatever that is. So the purple ones indicate on the right-hand side uh, axis, uh, what is it that uh, your drawdown has been? On the left-hand side, this particular, uh, uh, you know, access shows you how is it that your equity curve is moving. So your first few trades made you a lot of money. After that, it's just been downhill, uh, at least using this particular strategy. If you're using a different strategy, this graph would look, look different. So let's go to uh, an SMA strategy. Not sorry, SMA is not a strategy. Let's look at MACD strategy. Okay, now MACD strategy, we saw that the net profit was negative. So you started with a capital of 1 million rupees. Okay, you had a little bit of a profit using this particular strategy. And since then it was downhill. And uh, you know your net profit was actually negative using that. So that's what the chart is for. So if you really want to analyze how some money that you put into this particular strategy for this particular instrument, how has that moved? Okay, uh, I'm trying to use strategy tester. It says to apply the strategy to the chart first which I've already done. I tried it on surf and pharma one day chart, how to resolve this. Uh, you know, um, I'm not sure which is the strategy that you're trying to use, uh, but maybe that's strategy that might have come up as a strategy when you're pulling it up over here as an mm -hmm. indicator is not a strategy at all. Uh, there might be times that somebody else has coded it incorrectly and it might not generate buy or sell signals. That's what that error means. So pick up uh, one of the technical ones under, uh, you know, which are the ones that are built by trading view. Uh, plot that first and see if you're getting uh, the strategy tester and the results in the strategy tester. Are you using PPS? Uh, okay, uh, then it should come up. Let me just put it on Sun Pharma. Okay, so. If I plot this, this is what you should get on Sun Pharma if you're using this particular strategy. Now, PPS has also been done by multiple people. Uh, so you just uh, need to figure out whether you're using the same one. But 
try other strategies. Uh, you know, some, you know, it might just be that you're using a different PPS than the one that I'm using, because end of the day, it is a community script. Different people might have coded it uh, differently. And also just check uh, the time frame. Maybe if you're using a very different time frame, it might not be generating enough signals. Okay, so uh, that's about uh, how you plot indicators and strategies. Uh, and what is the difference between indicator? Uh, how do you test for a strategy? And there's some very good strategies. You know, when I started my own research in TradingView, uh, I just went ahead with uh, the different strategies that are already there uh, to see what is it that is making sense. But more importantly, what you can see over here is whenever you're, uh, suppose uh, you have a particular strategy, what you see on the right-hand side over here are these two curly boxes, okay? So uh, curly brackets. Now what these basically denote is that for these specific strategies or for these specific indicators, the code, the pine script code is available. Okay, so anybody can take a look at that pine script code and you can also do it either by clicking the curly brackets over there or by curly, clicking the curly brackets over here. So once you deploy the code over here. So most of the trading view scripts already have the code built in and you can see that you can then copy that code and use it into your own strategy. So if I look at PPS, uh, or simple moving average first. Let's, you know, uh, not strategy, let's use a simple moving average. Okay. So moving average simple. This is a simple moving average that uh, we have on uh, this particular chart has been plotted. Now, if I go to the curly brackets over here. So first one is whether you hide or keep it. Second is for settings. The third one, you might not see it everywhere. Now, only on the ones where the code has been provided, will you be able to see it? Sometimes uh, there will be com community scripts where the author has decided to hide the code. If the author has decided to hide the code, you'll not be able to see that. You'll not see curly brackets over here. So let's click on the curly bracket and see what happens. So if you look at the bottom, what you see is something called Pine Editor. And this is the code that has been used to make this strategy, which is the SMS, uh, sorry, uh, to make this indicator, which is the strategy indicator. I won't go into the details of the code, but all I'm telling you is if you do want to do your own research on how it is built, uh, how can you learn PineScript, you know, you can start with this. Obviously, if you want to join the course that, uh, you know, we're starting in uh, June, July, you can do that. So even over here, uh, uh, if I look at the PPS strategy, I can click on this and look at the code. And if I know any bit of coding, the coding language is pretty simple. Uh, uh, and straightforward, there's enough uh, material that's available um, online if you want to do and uh, try this on your own. But the key is that all the, so if you, if I click on MACD source code, then the MACD source code will come up over here. So all this is pretty straightforward, very simple. Uh, if you have the inclination to research more on PineScript, I won't go into further details, but I just wanted to show you that a lot of the code uh, you know, uh, is available uh, that way is not only trading view, but the trading community that you have on um, on this platform is also very helpful. There have been times where I've uh, gone into uh, this forum over here. There is a PineScript forum. So if you uh, go to the chats on the right-hand side, which is community chat that I showed you earlier, uh, there are public forums that, uh, you know, there's one on uh, trading uh, on PineScript so you can choose the forum that you want to join. And then I've put the challenges that I'm facing on a particular code into this. And somebody has come back to help me and, uh, you know, uh, help me out of that uh, jam that I got into or uh, tell me how to do, do that coding better. So the community is very helpful. A lot of the code, even that the community has provided is free. And you can go ahead and see, uh, you know, any of the codes that uh, you want to uh, take a look at. So the other thing uh, with trading view is that any of the trading view technical indicator that you see, you would not see the curly brackets over here, but once you add it, suppose uh, uh, ADX, suppose uh, you don't see it over here. If you add it to the chart, now ADX has come over here. If you add it to the chart, then you'll see the curly brackets. For the community scripts, you can see it over there itself, 
but for trading view, sometimes you'll need to add it to the chart and only then will uh, that particular uh, code come up. Go ahead. Uh, did somebody have a question? Karan? Yes, okay. Perfect. So uh, that's on trading view. Uh, that's on uh, indicators, uh, you know, strategy tester. Uh, you know, I'm left with stock screener and trading panel over here, which we will come to. Uh, but before that, I just wanted to show you a few other things uh, that are over here. So we discussed how you can pick up a particular security from here. So if I go back and pick up Nifty, uh, let me just clean up this chart. What you can do is go to settings and remove something called session breaks. So that way is you don't know when the day has ended and when the new day has started, but at least you have a cleaner chart. Uh, I will remove all the indicators, but the other way to do it is that you come over here and click on the cross. Okay, so you can do that individually for each one of uh, the strategies that you've added. And uh, the ones that are plotted in, in the box below, you need to come over here and click on the box as soon as it appears. Oh, sorry, click on the cross as soon as it appears. So now I have Nifty uh, one hour. Now, if I come over here, there are different time frames that have been listed. Okay, now depending on what are the time frames that you typically use, you can click on the star button over here. I'm just selecting the ones that I typically use. And one bit. Okay, now what happens that all the ones that have been added to your favorites will start showing up over here. So every time I don't need to click this drop down and select a time frame, I can just click the D over here. It will change to a daily time frame. It would I click 15 over here, it will change to a 15 minute time frame. I click on three, it changes to a three minute time frame or a five minute time frame. So once I've plotted all my favorites, all of them will automatically come up over here just by clicking uh, over here. You can do it on your chart also. You don't necessarily have to always go to the drop down and then figure out what is the time frame that you want to select. So uh, that's one. The second thing is that you can do the same thing for all the indicator templates also. So if I have an indicator te template that I want to use as favorite, so I can keep clicking over here. I can probably select all these. And what happens is that they will all come up over here. You won't see all of it, but if you hover on top of that particular button, you'll see what is the indicator template that it is about. And if you click on that, I don't even know what this is. Okay, so if I click on this, this will bring up that specific indicator template that I've chosen. And you know, this is for natural gas and exactly what uh, is happening on natural gas. I just need to click on that rather than having to select natural gas over here, then plot all those indicators that I want to track and then, you know, put the right kind of setting. So if I have natural gas over here, uh, you know, I, I have all these indicators that are there together for that uh, template. I don't have to even change anything over here in terms of my inputs. So those are some of the things that you just need to be aware of in terms of how to use it. Uh, instead of plotting all the different indicators all over again, I can just click on this uh, either from over here where I can select some of the ones that are not my favorites or I can just make that a favorite and click over here and that thing will come up. Uh, there are only three options in strategy gesture. Can we change them? I'm not able to find. Uh, no, you can have any number of uh, ways to change the options. So what happens is that, uh, you know, if I uh, go to a strategy tester, uh, what you're basically talking about are these inputs. Now these depend on how you've coded your Pine script. Okay, so uh, if I look at this, uh, this is the code of the Pine script. If you've given a lot of things that you want to input, then you'll have a lot of things that you can change in terms of uh, uh, the properties. If that is not the case, and you know, I can't comment on the community script in terms of how many parameters you can change, but if there's something that you cannot change, once you know Pine script, what you can always do is, uh, you know, pick up that particular code. So suppose, uh, okay, so I, I just pick this one up. Uh, and if I want to use pivot point and, uh, you know, it might not have a lot of 
items that I can change like this. I can go into Pine Script, and if I need more parameters to be able to change that, I'll need to do some coding. Again, uh, not a part of today's webinar, but you can actually uh, build in more parameters that you can change. So what I was saying is there are three options, equity, drawdown, and buy and hold equity. Can we change those? Over here in other properties? No, sir. Uh, can you go to strategy test once? Okay. So at the bottom, there are three options. Okay. Equity, drawdown, and buy and hold. Can we yeah. change this? Like say, for example, I want sharp ratio, either on the left or right. Can we add that? No, that will come up over here under performance survey. So you have this sharp ratio, sorting or ratio for that particular strategy. So the chart, uh, the graph over here is basically showing you a comparison between uh, your buy and hold versus what is your equity curve, what is the drawdown that you're seeing on the chart. But if you need to look at the performance summary, because sharp ratio is not a chart that you can plot. It is uh, what uh, is the result of your overall strategy. And that's why it is given as a statistic, but not plotted on a chart. Okay. Uh, any other questions? I think we've covered most of uh, what uh, we have to do over here. Uh, I will take all this off chart and then let's go back to Nifty and uh, start down this row over here. But before that, uh, you know, let me just uh, quickly uh, talk about this button over here. Now, what we've just seen till now is one single chart uh, that has been plotted. But if you want to compare two or three different uh, symbols, so you can click on this button and add all the symbols that you want. And we'll see what it does. So if I'm looking at uh, the comparison of Nifty and Bank Nifty, how is it that uh, those two indexes are uh, uh, moving around? Uh, so if I look at the auto index, if I look at uh, what else? Uh, FMCG. X uh, metals. Okay. Now I can plot any number of uh, different uh, securities. I can even plot a stock for that matter. If I want to see reliance along with all these other uh, parameters, I can plot all of them over here. Now, what is it doing? Okay, so let's uh, come to a smaller time a time frame. Oh, sorry, a narrower uh, interval. Uh, here is what uh, you're seeing. So, uh, you know, from this starting point, which is at zero. Okay, so if you look at this side, uh, this is a starting point for all of them. And against that, Nifty has moved 26% over this time frame, which is May of last year to March this year. But while Nifty has moved 26%, uh, whatever this is, uh, this is FMCG. You can click on that and see it over here. This will be highlighted. FMCG has moved only 14%. Uh, uh, this is Bank Nifty has only moved 11%. But these are the sectors that have outperformed Nifty. Okay, so this is something that you can use as a relative strength strategy. Which are the stocks, which are the sectors uh, that are outperforming? whether it's Bank Nifty, whether it is Opto, whether it is uh, Metals, uh, PSU Banks, uh, either one of them, you can plot that together with Nifty and then see how each of those uh, sectors are outperforming the Nifty. And you can do it across multiple stocks. You can do it across commodities, whatever you want to pick up. Just make sure that it's making sense in terms of the results that it's giving you. But uh, you uh, look at this, this is Reliance. Uh, Reliance has gone up 37% in that same time period. Uh, metals, uh, uh, Nifty Metals has gone up uh, 45%. And then this is uh, Auto that has gone up about 61%. Now, everything is starting from a particular point of time. If you change the starting point, the graph will be very different. So if I say beginning of 2024, so I need to just plot, bring that 2024 as a starting point of uh, the graph. And everything on 1st January 24 would be at zero. And then from there on, how each of those indexes 
have performed compared to the Nifty. So Nifty has gone up only 3.5% uh, over the last two and a half months. But auto has, uh, sorry, Reliance has gone up 14%. Uh, auto has gone up 13%. And all these sectors have underperformed the Nifty. So Bank Nifty was actually negative 083 and uh, this is FMCG. FMCG has actually fallen by 5%. So you know, typically this is uh, one of the analysis that is used to figure out what are the sectors that are outperforming. And then within those sectors, you can do a similar analysis saying that, okay, if I want to look at CNX Auto, I'll remove all this and put CNX Auto over here. And then within auto, there are a few stocks that I want to compare. So suppose Maruti is one of the auto stocks. So I'll plot that uh, m, m Mahindra and Mahindra. Uh, what else? Uh, Ashok Leland. Uh, Tata Motors, how can I forget? Okay, so these are some of the auto stocks. Now, which are the stocks that are doing better than the index? Okay, if I just want to look at the last two and a half months of data, so from beginning of 2024, so this is where I'll make the first bar as the 2024 bar, and then see auto index went up 13%. Uh, this is Tata Motors that went up 31% in this time frame, but uh, this one, whichever this is, Ashok Leland actually underperformed. It went down 8%. Uh, Mahindra and Mahindra has kept up with the auto index. Auto index has moved up 13%. Mahindra and Mahindra has moved up about 11.4%. And even for Maruti, Maruti has moved up by a certain percentage, which has more or less kept up with that particular index. But Tata Motors has kind of outperformed the index. So, you know, depending on how you'd want to use the strategy, this is how you'd want to plot that and ensure that you're able to fi figure out uh, which are uh, the stocks or which are the sectors that are outperforming one another. Any questions? Uh, sir, on what basis the reference point has been taken in this percentage calculation? Uh, see, that reference point uh, really depends on the strategy that you're using. So I won't go into the strategy, but I can tell you the way I typically use it. I uh, look at uh, the time frame that I'm trading. So typically, uh, you know, uh, depending on uh, what I want to use, I typically look at uh, the last three months, which are the sectors that are outperforming. The other way I do it is that I pick up a nifty low and from there, which are the stocks that are outperforming is what I'll pick up. So if I got Nifty over here, uh, so for me, this would be a good point to start somewhere over here, or this can also be a good point to start, but this does not have enough uh, data, but somewhere over here, somewhere over here uh, would be a good point. Uh, this goes way back, probably six months uh, plus worth of data, but uh, you know, this low point can be a good point for me to start and then compare which are the uh, indexes that have moved the Nifty up. Okay. Candles are Nifty and line charts are sectors. Correct. So that's the first level. After that, we picked up which is the sector that we would want to look at. So we picked up auto and then said that within auto, which is the auto stock? Because end of the day, you are not trading the sector. You're actually trading the stock. So you need to figure out a way to go from nifty all the way down to the sector and then the specific stock in the sector. So what you do is uh, you first plot nifty, you figure out which is the sector that's outperforming. So we picked up CNX auto, which was outperforming. So I, oh, sorry, that's, that's the problem. Okay, so you picked up CNX auto. Now within auto, I know that there are a few stocks on uh, auto one, two, sorry. George Tata Motors, Ashok Leland, Mahindra and Mahindra, Maruti. Then I figure out which is the stock that I'd want to invest in, considering which is the one that has outperformed the index. So if I look at it from uh, the low of October, which was a nifty low, uh, you know, probably even over here, if I uh, if I go back and use bar replay, okay, and I uh, take October as the starting point. Now, at this point of time, if uh, you know, just with this little bit of data, this is the stock that I would have probably picked up because this is outperforming. These two are still underperforming uh, the auto index. Um, I don't remember what the auto index was doing against the Nifty, but suppose the auto index was outperforming. This is the stock that I picked up. 
And then if I do a bar replay, I can even see over here how that stock has done compared to the index. So uh, that was Tata Motors. And even right now, even if I, uh, you know, the one thing that will change with the bar replay is that, you know, your starting point will keep changing every time a new bar forms. So you just need to make sure that your starting point is always optimal uh, and it doesn't keep moving. So, and then you can end this. And then you can see how your results have been if you are using this strategy to pick up a particular stock from that index. So first, you go from top down, you pick up an index, you pick up uh, the one that is outperforming and the stock that is outperforming within that index. So that's just one way to use relative strength and which is the stock that is higher on the relative strength. Okay, any questions on this? The one thing that I did miss out are the different types of charts that are there. So we've been using candle charts and for most of my own trading, I use candle charts. You also have the option of using bar charts. Again, I'm not going into what bar charts are, uh, but if that is something that you'd want to use, you can select bar charts from over here. Uh, there's this button. Uh, you can also look at hollow candles, uh, not very different from candles, line charts, and this is what you'll see in most of uh, most of the technical analysis books. Most of the times you will see uh, line charts because line chart only plots the closing price and uh, the candlestick has the open high low close all the three uh, uh, sorry all the four variables or the details in one single bar. And then you have other charts you know. Hi, Kanashi. Uh, I know a lot of people who use that Renko charts, then point and figure chart. So these are different types of charts. If you are aware of how they're used, what they're used for, and you want to try them out, uh, just make sure that uh, you know you use the correct chart on trading view, and uh, you know that is something that will help you, uh, you know, figure out uh, what is the strategy, what is the uh, trading style that you'd want to use. But there are all these different types of charts that are available. You just need to pick the one that you're comfortable with. Okay. So with that, uh, you know, I'll just go back to Nifty. You can actually click anywhere on the chart and uh, you know put in the uh, uh, put in the symbol uh, that you want. So you can click anywhere on the chart itself. And if you start typing and you start typing with an alphabet, what happens is that it assumes that it is a stock or a script that you're pulling up. So it will automatically bring that for you. So I can just uh, type bank nifty and it will come up over here. But as soon as you put a number, what will happen is that it will take that as a time interval and I can just type 45 and it will change this to a 45 minute time frame. If I type 60, because I'm starting with a number, then automatically it will uh, assume that you're typing a time frame and change the time frame. So if I press 15, that's all that I need to do. So I don't need to click over here or go anywhere else. All I need to do is put a 25 minute time frame and click or a five minute time frame and press enter. I can, uh, you know, I can go to that particular time frame. The other thing just in terms of chart setting is that, uh, you know, uh, suppose you move things around uh, and your chart is looking very weird. And uh, if, if you're moving from one screen to the other, you don't even have all the uh, data over here. So one thing that you can do is probably move it from uh, from the axis over here, the price axis. The other thing to do is if you are on Windows, you can use Alt R or Option R on a Mac. As soon as you hit that, it will come up in a default view for trading view, which will make sure that all the bars are visible within the time frame that uh, is mentioned. So. You know, if, if I suppose I'm using the daily bar, even if I change the time frame, it will make sure that all the price points are within the screen that uh, is there in front of me. So, you know, as soon as I scroll left or right, or if I change the uh, duration of data that I have within the screen, it will keep changing it and auto adjusting it. If I hit Alt, uh, Alt R on Windows and Option R on Mac. So I can change this now. If I've changed anything, uh, now if I scroll, I 
cannot see all the bars and how much data is, uh, uh, you know, within all these bars. Now, you know, like I don't have these price points visible to me. But as soon as I hit Alt R or Option R, all these can be auto adjusted by trading view. Okay, so uh, that takes care of most of the things that we have on the top. Uh, you know, if you are interested in uh, what are the other things that are there in trading view, you can click on this button over here and you can actually go into some of uh, uh, the aspects uh, of trading view. Uh, I won't go into these because these are more just to understand what trading view is, uh, you know, uh, what are the other uh, languages that you can use. Yeah, keyboard shortcut is probably something that's helpful. So if you click on this, you can actually find the keyboard shortcuts for charts. Uh, you can see the keyboard shortcuts for indicators and drawing. If you are somebody who uses the keyboard a lot more than using the mouse, this is something that's very helpful. Uh, so you can go on the, each of these subheads. Control A is, okay, so uh, option A for uh, on the Mac. Uh, because I'm using a Mac, it can automatically figure out what uh, is the button that I need to press. Uh, and if you're using uh, a Windows machine, then uh, those options will come up over here. So that's how you can figure out what are the shortcuts that you want to use. Uh, anything that I missed over here, notification, home. Uh, Okay, uh, so that's about it over here. There's one other thing that I was actually trying to look for. Yeah, so if you come over here, uh, I'll, I'll go back to the chart, but the few things that I wanted to show you, uh, which probably help, I'll come to screeners, economic calendar we've already seen, futures, market data, not so much the community, okay. On markets, uh, I wanted to show you something called a heat map, and I'm just trying to figure out where that is. Okay, Deepak will come to log charts. Uh, okay, if anybody who uh, can find uh, where we have something called heat map, uh, just let me know. And uh, you know, we can probably spend some time on that. Oh, let's see. I, yeah, but, I guess it's under products only. It's under products. Okay. Screener. Okay. Heat map. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. This is what I was looking for. Thanks. So, uh, you know, what this does is that uh, depending on the index, so this is right now showing SP. Uh, if I go to Nifty, you can pick up an index. And it will show you what each of those stocks in uh, that particular index uh, is doing. And this is a good visual, uh, which will basically tell you, you know, whether, uh, you know, there's a particular sector, technology services, whether it's doing well or not, energy and metal. They, uh, this probably tanked yesterday, and that's why it is all in the red. Uh, consumer durables, more or less flat, uh, you know, communications, uh, you know, green, uh, finance, more or less uh, flat. So, this basically shows you uh, over here, what is the heat map that they're using? So plus 3% is this green over here, plus 2% is typically uh, over here. And just by looking at this, you can see any index. So let's look at NASDAQ, I thought that did well last night. Uh, so the NASDAQ index, uh, you know, if you just look at uh, all the stocks, it will give you one visual representation of how that entire index is doing. And this is something that uh, you know sometimes just helps you uh, in one snapshot look at uh, how each of the stocks within that index are doing. The size of the boxes really represent uh, the market cap of that particular stock. So the smaller stocks have a lower market cap. The larger ones uh, have a higher market cap. Mm. 
if I look at the Dow Jones, uh, you know, this, these are the 30 stocks in the Dow, Dow Jones, and this is how it performed. Okay, so that's uh, the other thing. Uh, what else is relevant from here? Uh, okay, I'll let you guys explore. Uh, all these are more around uh, just getting additional information about what you're doing. Uh, it really depends on how you want to use that data. So let's go back to super charts. And meanwhile, let me uh, see if there are any, any other questions. Just click on auto on access and it does the same. Yeah, it does, right? So you can click on auto on the access somewhere. Yeah, auto fit and then uh, do the same thing as alt uh, R or uh, option R. So, uh, one of the things that you can do uh, using uh, the charts over here is that instead of having a regular chart, you can use something called a log chart. Now, the log chart, uh, just in a simple way, basically make sure that uh, the percentage increments are constant at each time frame. So typically when you're looking at a longer term chart, it's preferable to look at a long term uh, log chart uh, it's preferred to look at a long log chart uh, when you're using long-term data. Uh, the reason being that, you know, when Nifty was at 7,500 versus Nifty being at 22,000, a 100-point move at 7,500 in percentage term is much more than a 100-point move at 22,000. And that is something that uh, the log chart typically adjusts for. So if you're looking at log uh, long-term data, just use a log chart and not a regular chart. Again, this is something that is more under the purview of technical analysis. So I won't go into the details, but you can click over here and figure out the kind of chart that you want. Uh, you can choose from a log chart or a regular chart. Okay. So with that, you know, I'll come back to these drawings over here. Uh, I think that should be easy for all of us. But before uh, I go there, let's quickly look at what is this thing at the bottom over here called stock screener. Uh, so we know how to make a watch list. We know how uh, to look at uh, the charts based on the watch list. We can select each of those symbols, pull that chart up uh, on trading view. But what we can also do is I don't have all the 2000 stocks in my watch list. Uh, I want to figure out all the stocks that are meeting a particular threshold. So if there's a particular stock that is, uh, uh, yes, we can move a ratio charts. Good point, Anuj. I'll, I'll come to that. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you want to figure out within all the stocks that are there on S and P, on uh, New York Stock Exchange, or uh, in the Indian markets, which are the ones that are trading above the twenty-day moving average? Which are the ones that are probably below the twenty-day moving average? Which are the ones that have generated X amount of profit. So this is what you'll use, Stock Screener. Obviously there are a lot of websites also that uh, provide you that information, but the good thing is that within TradingView, you do have a lot of tools that you can use. You come to filters over here, and let me first remove all the filters. And, you know, it's given me some 6,700 uh, items that are there. And it's only because of the fact that uh, I think it is right now on the Indian market. If I use uh, the US market, then this number of 6,700 will, will be much higher. So I go into filter. Instead of, uh, you know, symbol and uh, everything, I first select only NSC. Within NSC, I only want common stock. I don't want a mutual fund. I don't want a preferred stock. I can say common stock. Okay. Uh, I don't want the sector. I want to pick up all stocks that are probably less than, uh, sorry, greater than 50 million market cap. The average volume is more than 100K. Average 10 day volume is more than 100K. Average 60 day volume is again more than 100K. Okay, so I can keep selecting the parameters over here and you can see these numbers changing. Okay, so as soon as you make the necessary changes in the parameters and suppose of country, obviously it will be India. I don't think anything will change because your index, I'm you know, keeping all the indexes together. And suppose I want uh, stocks that 
And if I, you know, if I don't want to scroll through all the parameters, I can probably uh, go to the financials or technicals and figure out which is the one that I want. So something that is trading above the 52 day or so suppose the ones that are making a new all time high. Because I've selected this. Now it has only given me the 28 stocks that have made a new all time high as of Thursday. Okay. So what you can do is keep that. And obviously there are a lot of other parameters. I'll let you explore what makes sense for you, but you can go through all of them. Uh, you can put some numbers over there, see what this throws up and you can use this to then figure out the stocks that you want to uh, pick up. So new 52 week high, six month high, ADX, which is average directional index, um, you know, six month performance. You can also look at some of the financial parameters to see if uh, the price earning ratio is above a certain number. If you want to use that as a parameter, uh, price to book value, uh, the quick ratio, gross margin, a lot of things that uh, you can play around with and figure out what are the stocks that come up in your screener and then figure out what you want to do with that stock. Now, suppose I have these 28 stocks, you know, I'm trying to keep it to a very limited number. Uh, let me just go to this one. Okay, this is an empty uh, watch list. So there are a few things that I can do. First is that I can just click on that stock and that stock chart will come up over here. Okay, so I can uh, click on this uh, uh, stock right from here. So I don't necessarily need to type that over here or anywhere else. I can just click on these stocks that have uh, been filtered through the screener and I can go ahead and plot that chart on top over here. The second thing that I can do is I can change these specific columns. So right now I have these columns. I can go over here and figure out what are the columns that I want. If I need to remove a few columns, I can click, unclick, okay, and those columns will go away. If there are specific columns that I want to add back, I can choose the columns that I want to see in this particular view, and it will give me all those columns. And then again, all this data can again go back into a CSV file if you again want to push something into Excel and then uh, you know use Excel as uh, some additional analysis tool that uh, you know that is something that you can do again. So that's about screeners. Uh, the other good thing that you can do is you can click on all of them and add selected to watch list. So whatever watch list is open, as soon as you say, add all selected to watch list, you can automatically bring that up over here. So you don't necessarily need to, you know, use any of the other tools that I've told you to put all these stocks into a watch list. So instead of going to the NSE website, if I come over here, I remove all my filters. I need all the NSC sector. Okay, so I need not sector, probably let's see. What did we pick up? Okay, uh, Nifty 50. So I pick up Nifty 50 index and I get all the Nifty 50 stocks over here. All that I need to do is select all of them, right click and add selected to watch list. It gives me all the Nifty 50 stocks over here. So instead of going to the NSC website, you know, going through all the Excel uh, magic that we're trying to do. You can just come over here and uh, pick something up directly from here and create your watch list. You can do that for Nifty 50 index. You can do that for uh, Nifty Auto if you want all the auto stocks. And you can use a separate uh, watch list. Pick up the 15 stocks that are there in the auto index. And that will come up over here. <coughs> The reason that uh, I showed you uh, what you can do in Excel is because maybe there are times that you don't want a specific, uh, you know, index or uh, stocks that are there, uh, which are there within the screener. You might want a different list. It's easier to copy paste it from Excel rather than trying to do it from here because you add this and you'll add something else and then you'd have to delete some stocks. It's always good to know both uh, the ways to do it and then figure out what is it that could work for you. Yeah, so you can also do a control A uh, instead of you know scrolling the way I did, you do a control A and then uh, just add that to the watch list. 
Okay. Uh, any questions on screener? Yes, screener works as a free uh, trading view account also. Let's just go and uh, see. Uh, basis your experience, what do you think the screener dot in is better or the, uh, this uh, trading view screener is better? Mm -hmm. See, I've used uh, all of them. Uh, I've used uh, screener dot in. I've used uh, there's something called charting uh, again for the Indian market. I've also used trading view screener. Uh, I feel that trading view screener has some limitations in terms of uh, the exact number that you can punch in uh, if you're trying to narrow down what you want to do. It has some limitations. So, uh, you know, I feel um, just in terms of the logic, chart ink is better, but also a lot more complicated than what trading view is. So that's one. Uh, so you need to sometimes just use uh, multiple uh, screeners. So right now what I'm using is really an Excel based tool that actually picks up data from the NSE website and based on some historical data that I already have, it uh, gives me the list of stocks that uh, meet a particular parameter. So I'm actually not using either TradingView or any of the other screeners I've built my own. So uh, I'm not using that, but in the past I have, um, and I'm, just from my experience, uh, I feel that there are limitations in TradingView because uh, a lot of the parameters are hard, hard coded. If you look at it, uh, you know, if you look at the technicals uh, below a particular value, it does not give you a crossover. Okay, so a lot of times you will, uh, uh, sorry, uh, it does, but it crosses over a particular number. It does not see what, show you whether the technical indicator has crossed over. So those are some of the limitations and there are only so many values that you can put in over here. Uh, what works best is actually a mix of all of them. So there are a few things screener does better than charting. There's some things that charting does better than screener, uh, especially when you're looking at uh, pivot points. Uh, charting uh, uh, is able to do a better job because you're able to actually code the actual formula into charting. So you can use a mix of all the three. It really depends on what you're trying to do. If you're just trying to put some of the parameters that we just put in, uh, trading view is as good as any 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 other screener. But if you want to do a better job on some of the financial parameters, probably screener, and then probably charting if uh, there's something that's more complex. Okay, so I'll just take that one question on screener, whether it is uh, something that you can do in the free version. Yes, you can. So if you just look at it, this is the free version that I'm using. And I can uh, probably just pick up six month high stocks. And I don't know what, okay, so reset. All let's go to exchange. Okay, uh, for some reason I'm still on in the US market, so let's stay with the US market, uh, NYSC. And no, no, go to the home page, and then you will find the uh, USA and um, India on the on the front page. Right yes, uh, you can see the American map. Oh yeah, in the yeah yeah change here for India. Yeah, thanks. Only thanks. then it will show BSE and NSE. Perfect. Thanks. So let's stay with uh, the US one. Uh, we just saw Indian markets, uh, I think for the rest of the audience. So NYSE exchange. And then if I want to pick the S&P 500 stocks, let's see if I have that. So S&P 500. So a lot of you who have been a part of uh, the uh, CMT challenge, uh, this is one of the ways that you can actually uh, just go ahead and build that particular uh, you know, watch list in trading view. So you just uh, click on S and P 500 index over here, because those are the stocks that you can use uh, in uh, CMT. Uh, and these will be the stocks that will come up, and then you can just take it to a particular uh, watch list, and then you can start researching the stocks that uh, you want to buy or sell uh, for that particular competition. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, over here you can probably just pick up the country that you want to uh, analyze. Okay, uh, if there are no other questions, uh, I'll close this down uh, and we'll quickly uh, do some of uh, the tools over here. Uh, it shouldn't take a lot of time. It really depends on how you want to use those tools. But then I think the final part of today's uh, conversation would really revolve around paper trading and how you can use some of the uh, brokers over here. So uh, I think we've covered most of what 
uh, we had to uh, so let's see so over here the different types of lines uh, that you can plot uh, i think let's first plot something so this is a line that you can plot now as soon as you plot something you'll have the settings bar over here you can change the color you can change the thickness okay you can also uh, change few of the parameters from over here so if you want to extend the line by a small amount you can probably instead of 2700 you can keep it at 2900 and then see what happens to that line so it's basically moving from one price bar to the next one and this is increasing or decreasing the length so uh, when you're decreasing the first one it's going moving more to the left if you're decreasing the second one it's moving more to the left again if you're increasing it it will move to the right so you don't use that too much but just the fact that you can change the color you can change the uh, uh, change the thickness you can also add an alert that we're talking about uh, sorry guys i you know i, I don't think uh, we fixed uh, the issue that was there with uh, bitcoin and why that alert is not working it should have been working uh, but uh, you know i'll let okay for some reason the alert is not there anyways uh, Okay, it should have been working, but you know, now that you know how to create an alert, uh, you can go ahead and experiment and create your own alerts and see how that's working for you. Uh, you can keep it on the line, you can keep it on the price, you can also keep it on any of the indicators that uh, we've just seen. Okay, so this is one. Uh, so I'm just showing you, uh, you know, what is it that you can do with the settings uh, over here. So you can uh, color it you can look at the style whether it's a dotted line or a straight line uh, we just saw settings okay and then uh, you can also change the visibility you can copy it uh, you know you can show it only at certain intervals so if you don't want to see this line on a one hour interval then you can uh, choose it from here or you can also go uh, over here and uh, no, 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 not over here. Yeah, you can change the settings over here and uh, see, um, you know, current interval and above, which means that you can do a daily, which is the current interval. You can see this line on a weekly interval. You cannot see that on a one hour interval. So if I select this and I select one hour interval, this line will disappear. But if I go to a weekly interval, then you will again see this line right over here. So that's, uh, you know, how the settings work. So with that, uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, go through what uh, the other tools are, but the setting the parameters remain the same. Ray basically is, you know, if you put, plot two points, it will extend to the rest of the line. The first one was where you had to plot the line from one place, start and end. One point. Start and end, but Ray will extend that line Info line, you can put this line and it will tell you how long the line is, how many bars, how many days distance, and all that data will stay on the screen itself. Uh, extended line, if you want to extend it in both directions. So one is extending in only one direction. The other one is extending in both directions. Uh, what else? Uh, probably a horizontal line is fine, horizontal ray. From one particular point, it will only go to the right. Okay, so it uh, won't go anywhere to the left. So if I feel that this is a good low point, I can plot it from here and extend to the right so that I know that this is an area of support for this particular price. Okay, similarly, if I pick a vertical line, uh, this is a vertical line. If uh, and typically this is, uh, you know, if there's a specific time frame that you're looking at, if you're looking at a particular date where you want to exit a particular contract, and then the cross line is where you have a, you know, a cross that you want to make for both time as well as price. Uh, yeah, channel is something that, again, uh, you know, some of you who are using uh, different tools, you can plot a channel uh, that will basically give you two parallel lines. Uh, and you can probably see how that particular uh, index or that particular stock is doing. And then, you know, these are different ways. Pitchfork is something that we, 
I haven't used it. You know, I'll, I'll let you guys figure out how to use it. But uh, if you know how to use it and uh, what it tells you, then you can plot that using this particular uh, tool over here. Similarly, if you go down, let me just delete all of it first. Okay. Now, if you go down, uh, you have something called a Fibonacci replacement, which is plotted over here, uh, whichever way you want to plot it. Uh, then there's a Fibonacci extension. Okay, so you plot these three points and then you try and see what is the projection based on the replacement that has happened. So a lot of these things, uh, you know, really depends on how you want to use it, whether you're aware of the right usage. Uh, please make sure that you don't just plot it uh, because a lot of these have different usages and you need to know how to actually use it. So a GAN box, again, I don't use GAN, so I don't uh, plot it enough, but you can plot all this. There are a lot of features that are available in trading you, but make sure that you understand the right way to use it before you start using these tools. But a lot of these are there, uh, you know, more than most of the other platforms that I've seen. X, A, B, C, D pattern, etc. These are from uh, one of the authors named Scott Carney. So, uh, you know, he has all these patterns that, uh, you know, uh, you can plot, uh, which uh, at least uh, from the book uh, has a very high success rate. Uh, and uh, you can uh, plot all of them in, on the chart. So X, A, B, C, D pattern is one of them. Then people who are using Elliott Wave, you can have plot your wave one, two, three, four, and five something like this, uh, if you're using Elliott waves. So all those things that you can uh, do, uh, right, uh, using the tools over here. And then you have something called time cycles uh, for some of you who are part of the CMT curriculum level two and three, or level one, two, and three, you would have already seen us using this, where uh, we're plotting not only time cycles, but also the cycle lines, which, which you typically plot from one low to the other and see where is it that uh, one cycle completes for a particular stock or for an index so what else uh cycles uh you know these are uh just plots where you want to uh take a trade and you want to plot uh you know what is your target and what is your stop loss if uh, this is where you enter that particular stock uh you've just provided yourself a visual reference on the chart in terms of where you enter and exit so these are some of the tools that will help you do that you can obviously use a line to do that, but uh, this helps you to just show it on the chart without having a huge uh, investment in terms of making multiple lines and putting those numbers over there. Uh, what else? The forecast basically shows, you know, if you forecasted uh, this price to move from here to here, and it, it has moved during that time, uh, it will show you that uh, whether the uh, trade has been successful or not. So let's put pull up something that is actually trading. Okay. So crude and I take a one minute time frame. Okay, so the crude uh, crude uh, spot price is still uh, trading in the international market, and you can probably plot something uh, as a forecast. And if I say that from here on the next part, it will probably go over here. And if it does, then it will just show me a success. Okay, taking too many bars. Okay, I'll just wait for it, this one. Uh, what else? And then, you know, uh, you can go through the rest of it, uh, but uh, Anchored VWAP is another tool that, uh, mm, I forgot the name of uh, the author who uses, uh, uh, who uses Anchored VWAP. Uh, how can I forget that? I think Sharon. Yeah, Steve Shannon. Steve, Steve Shannon. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, I think his book is called Volume Profile. So basically, uh, what uh, anchored VWAP is that, uh, you know, if you know about VWAP, a VWAP indicator is something that is typically used uh, for intraday trading. And uh, anchored VWAP is a little different where it's not only taking the intraday volume, it is basically, basically taking the VWAP from a particular po point of time. So if I click on over here, so, and the way he's described it in the book is to uh, take it from any major high or low. So if I, you know, this is on the one minute time frame, so it's not really relevant so much, 
But if you take it on a larger time frame, okay, just look at what uh, this is happening, what has happened with the forecast. So if I plotted a forecast saying that this is where I feel the prices will move, it just shown a success. If it, the prices have not moved over there, then it was shown a failure. Uh, I don't even know why I would want to use it, but uh, that's uh, something that uh, you can use if that is something that helps your trading. So let's remove this. Now, if I plot anchored VWAP from over here, okay, so this is on crude. Let's uh, put it on. Uh, Nifty futures. Okay, and again, VWAP, because it contains both volume and uh, price data, you would want to plot it for, uh, on anything that has price data along with the volume data and not just the uh, price data. So you can pick up one major high or low. So again, uh, you know, it does give you some uh, support and resistance level uh, on a lot of the stocks. Uh, what else? So that's there. Uh, these are more drawing tools. If you want to do some drawing, uh, you can probably plot that over here. Uh, I'll again, let you guys explore that. Uh, if you are publishing something and you want to uh, highlight a particular area of the chart, uh, these things are useful. Then uh, text, you can probably just type your own text. Okay, and, and that will stay on the chart. Uh, Smileys. This is important. Uh, so this is a ruler which will basically. This is a ruler that will basically uh, help you plot. Uh, you know, in one shot, what is the move that you're seeing? So you can just plot it over here. This every time you click on the screen, it will move away. So this is just a short term thing where if you want to just see what the price move has been. So from here to over here, the index moved about 896 points down. You just select the start point and the end point, and it will show the number of days. It will show the number of bars that it took and what are the point movement. So you can use that for any uh, quick reference that you want, uh, and you'll be able to see uh, the details that you want. Zoom in, basically, if you just want to see this portion of the chart, you can click on zoom in, and it will give you that. Uh, particular uh, area and you can click on uh, the uh, you know zoom out to come back to the chart that you are in magnet is something that uh, you can use so suppose you know if i am just looking at all the support and resistance areas for this particular chart and i feel that all the places uh, a horizontal ray okay all the points over here uh, are uh, important. So what it will do is it will basically pick, uh, automatically pick the lowest point. I don't have to uh, manually try and pick the lowest point or the highest point. So I can just go onto the chart, uh, go onto that particular uh, thing. Even if I click over here, it will pick, the magnet is on. So yeah, I have to be close to that particular candle. It will pick the lowest or the highest point, depending on how I want to, uh, pick uh, pick the point. So it will pick the exact high, exact low. And that helps you in just making sure that you're plotting that particular uh, uh, particular line from the right point. Uh, this is stay in the drawing mode. Now, I want to do this not only for these three lines. I want to continuously do this. I can keep going and clicking over here and coming back. Or I can stay in the drawing mode. And every time that I click on the screen, a line will come up. Okay, so whatever drawing tool that I've used, if I am in the drawing mode and I've locked it, every time I click, it will come up. I have to first exit this. I have to exit that particular tool and come back to the crossbar, and then it will stop uh, coming up. So otherwise, every time I click and I am in the drawing mode, right now I have not selected anything, but now if I select something, it will keep coming up till the time I exit the drawing mode and I exit that particular uh, tool. Lock, basically lock all the drawing tools. You can't move it. So even if I want to move this around, it won't. I can hide the drawing. I can hide the indicators. If I have an indicator plotted over here, so suppose uh, volume. So if the volume is over here, I can hide either the drawing, I can hide the indicator and keep the drawings, or I can hide all of it. Okay, uh, so this is something where you want uh, the 
drawings to be synced across all layout, which means that if you have multiple layouts over here, you can have the drawings on that particular chart across multiple layouts or uh, just in one particular layout. Uh, ruler can be started with shift for windows, correct? Uh, so again, this is something that you can see if you browse through the shortcut, uh, uh, the shortcut uh, page that I showed you. Uh, better than magnet is using control for windows, correct? Uh, and magnet isn't necessary all the time. The use control is better. You're right. Um, you know, again, there are tools that are there. Uh, once you're aware of those tools, you can figure out what is your use case. Uh, they might be things that uh, you've been through today, which might not be useful for you, it might be useful for somebody else. But as long as you know what to use and what to discard, I think that's what will help you uh, when you uh, go and do your research in terms of additional training. Okay, so we've covered everything. And this is basically if you want to uh, delete something, uh, whether it's the indicators or the drawings, and you want to delete all of them together, you can use this. I think the last thing that uh, we'll come to is the paper trading. Go ahead. Some data question? Yes. Yeah, sir. Uh, just one question. For uh, Like you showed that there are chart patterns which are now available in trading view. So right. can we also, like, is there a possibility of having a screener to say that, okay, HNS pattern is being exhibited by say so 50, 20 stocks or whatever, like from trading view. No, you, you can't use that as a screener, but you'll have to actually go on individual charts to figure out what that chart is doing. So yeah, of course, then that will be too difficult. Otherwise, if, since it is available already, so which all charts are actually, which all stocks are actually undergoing that phase, if that was possible, it'll be much easier to actually go and shortly the stocks. I agree. I agree. It's just that uh, the way trading view works is that uh, you know you have to uh, you know select individual charts. Uh, the screener function uh, I am aware is very limited in trading view. Uh, but uh, yes, if you go to the individual charts, uh, you should be able to uh, look at uh, you know what are the chart patterns that are forming on those specific charts. So that is something that's easy. Uh, and that's where I think the watch list comes in very handy. So even if you have to scroll through a list of uh, 60, 70 stocks, you'll be able to very easily go through this. But yes, there's no screener that uh, is able to give you a chart pattern uh, on the fly. Okay, Sorry. Second, uh, second question. Yes. Uh, second question is that uh, in the watch list, is there, a, is there a method where we can put a remarks column together? For example, if I take a trade on say whatever pattern or breakout or whatever it is, and then I put a remark and it's stored here. So tomorrow, like after seven days, 10 days, I can actually check them that yes, this is the pre premise which actually the trade was taken and whether that today holds or doesn't hold, is there a possibility of having a remarks and uh, with a history? Uh, not, uh, so what you can do is you can add notes Okay, uh, and you can say why you've taken that. What you can also do is have different watch list for something that you've taken on a head and shoulder pattern, something that you've taken on a triangle pattern. You can uh, have different watch list, and even within a particular watch list, you can add a different section. So suppose uh, you know the first section is uh, one second. So the first section is suppose your head and shoulder pattern, and then the second sec section is triangle. You can okay. do that, or you can just put your notes over here in terms of why you've taken the trade. So each individual stock also notes are possible. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, sorry. Wait a second. Sorry to interrupt, but there's an option where we can like uh, filter out stocks on basis of candlesticks, just the candlesticks. It's in screener 2.0. Like there are very limited options, but like you can try that. Yeah. Good point. Uh, if you go over here. Uh, back to home. You can look at screener 2.0 and then I think you have a filter over here. Uh, click on the plus option uh, beside beta. Beta. Okay, perfect. Uh, technicals, yes. Market data. Okay, technicals. Okay, now these are all indicators. There's candlestick above uh, in technicals only, like fifth, yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, candlestick pattern. And then, okay, so 
you know, I'll let you explore this and see if uh, that helps you. Uh, but okay, so I haven't tried uh, Screener 2.0, uh, but interesting. Okay, a good thing to explore more on. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, yeah, I think somebody had a question on uh, whether we can uh, pull up uh, ratios. Uh, so let me just uh, complete that and then uh, we can go to uh, you know trading panel. So typically what happens is that sometimes, uh, you know, if I look at uh, one of the indexes over here. Okay, so there's, there's something called a ratio chart, which basically shows you the ratio of one commodity or one index versus the other. So uh, this is a ratio chart of gold versus silver, which is something that uh, is uh, already built in. But for a lot of cases, so suppose if I want to see what is Nifty doing against Bank Nifty, I don't have that chart readily available. So, you know, is Nifty outperforming or Bank Nifty outperforming? So I can click over here and I can, you know, I can choose any uh, uh, index or any stock to be the numerator and another one to be the denominator. So what happens, I can say Bank Nifty. Uh, Y divided by Nifty, okay? And as soon as I hit, hit enter, oops. Okay, and now if I hit enter, so now it will sh show me how is Nifty, and bank nifty moving together so if this chart is going down which means either the numerator is going down or the denominator is moving up faster than the numerator so if you could see bank nifty is actually underperforming nifty over the last several weeks or several months really and over the last few weeks it has started outperforming where it went up and then again it's rising I can also do it in a different manner. I let's just plot all the three. So I can look at Nifty or let's put Bank Nifty on top. And what we'll do is uh, not the symbol, uh, the interval. Okay, so all of them are on daily interval. So if you actually see uh, these three charts. Okay, over the last several weeks, uh, you know, um, and you can probably look at the crosshair at, at, uh, in all the charts. Uh, this chart has been going down because Nifty has been moving up much more than Bank Nifty. Bank Nifty was more or less flat. And all this time Nifty was moving up and that is why this ratio chart of Nifty and Bank Nifty was going down. Okay, so this is the way you can plot a ratio chart. I'll, uh, you know, uh, just wanted to give you the basics of how to plot it. And, uh, you know, you can also create an index over here. So some people asked about whether we can uh, create an index. You can put multiple stocks and that will help you create an index. You can also uh, use some addition subtraction if you want to give more weightage to one stock versus the other stock uh, in that particular index. So you can put all that together and create an index of your own. Uh, a little complicated, but uh, this is one of the things that uh, you can uh, do directly on trading view. Okay, uh, with that, I think we come to the final part of this conversation, which is over here, the trading panel. Now, the trading panel has uh, one paper trading, which basically, uh, you know, as you click on paper trading and you connect, what happens is that, uh, you know, it will pull up, uh, you know, a screen like this. And let's go to an index that is on right now. So, you know, I'll put to crude. And I've already probably taken a trade. Now I can click over here and say buy. If you give me this window, it will ask me if I want to put a take profit target. I put a stop loss target. I buy at the market and not at the limit. And I just hit buy. Okay, so. Oh, sorry, I'm on MCX code. Let's go into US. Okay, so this market is open and I said buy. Market price, take profit, I'm not changing any of the parameters, and I hit buy. So 
it has taken one lot of crude. Okay, and then this position is open. I'm already at a loss of 40 cents. And, uh, you know, it's probably even hit its stop loss if, uh, okay. It has already hit a stop loss. Uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, you can use this to figure out the buy and sell. Let's put a proper order then. So buy at the market, take profit would be 78.99 and the stop loss would be 78.7. Okay, whatever that comes to. Okay, now it has taken a trade. It will keep that trade open till time either the stop loss or uh, five more times. Yeah. Okay, so now you can actually see that it's taken a trade over here. Uh, there's a stop loss. Uh, there's a take profit target, and uh, you know you can track that on this order screen over here. So these are the two orders that are open. One is the take profit. One is the stop loss order. Uh, there's nothing that is inactive. The three that have been filled. What is the account history? Uh, you know, what is the trading journal? If you want to make your own notes, uh, what is the time that you uh, purchased or sold? So this is something that uh, you can use even in the live market. If you want to just test some of your strategies uh, and also figure out uh, whether there is some emotion involved in your trading. Uh, obviously, because there's no money, the emotion is really not uh, there in paper trading, but you can use this as a tool to see if there is a particular hypothesis that you had, whether it is working out in the actual market or not. And uh, all you need to do is come down here, click on paper trading, and uh, you know you can uh, go ahead and trade uh, you know, through TradingView. The other option is that uh, you have all these brokers and uh, you know, you'd have one or the other broker in most countries, uh, actually see all brokers. So this is a list of brokers. What happens is that as soon as you connect to a broker account, uh, you will be able to trade directly uh, with that particular broker. Uh, so you know you can. Uh, Dhan is one of the brokers. You can uh, directly connect to Dhan. Uh, if you have an account, you can connect through this. Uh, I'll not log into it right now, but uh, what I'll show you is that once you connect to Dhan, the trade is very similar to the way you do paper trading, but what happens is that you cannot trade an index obviously you can trade the futures okay but you cannot use a continuous future so if you see one uh, and an exclamation mark it is a continuous future what you need to trade is the current month's future so so right now the current month is march so this the one sign is a continuous future which is basically an adjusted price for multiple futures that have already expired you need to trade the March futures. So you come up to this one and then you place your buy or sell order for your broker and it will automatically be transacted on your broker terminal. The other way uh, you can do it is if you are dealing directly in stocks. So if uh, you want to just pull up uh, the stocks in Nifty 50. So suppose this STFC life is one that you want to buy. So you can come here, put a buy order and that will then be traded on your broker terminal. So right now, because I've logged into a paper trading, it will trade on paper trading. But once you log into your broker terminal, this order will go directly to your broker. Right now, for the Indian market, there are uh, only two brokers. Uh, sorry, one second, let me just let me just log out and go back. Okay. Okay. Uh, the only two brokers. The third one is. Uh, so Dhan fires. The third one is uh, Paytm money. Uh, you know, I don't know what your views are on Paytm, but I wouldn't recommend that to anybody right now. Uh, and then you have a list of brokers. So Paytm money is uh, the third one for India. Uh, you know, you, you can trade on interactive brokers also, uh, you know, for the Indian market. Mitesh, a composite edge is also Indian broker, I suppose. Which one? Composite? Composite edge. Okay, maybe, uh, maybe I'm not aware. Of and uh, interactive broker again is available in India. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks. So can we trade in? Can we trade in index and stock options through Trading View? Options. Yeah, you can uh, Trading View does not provide you options information, so it's uh, not uh, something that uh, you can trade. 
Uh, yes, through the algos and through PineScript, uh, you can use the spot prices or the future prices to pick up a particular option that you want to trade. But the challenge typically comes in is that you need to take market orders because you would not be able to get the actual price. So you're basically trading based on, uh, you know, uh, what the index is doing. So if I show you one or two uh, cases over here, so if I'm looking at this one, which is basically a trend breakout. Uh, so this is an option trade where, you know, it takes a trade uh, if there's a breakout on the five minute range, but what it is doing is taking a trade based on the expiry date and uh, uh, of the option. So you have to manually punch those things in. So I've put something that uh, helps me figure out what is the expiry date. So every week, once the expiry happens, I have to change only this parameter uh, and then, uh, you know, reset my algo. But it can take an option trade, but the only challenge is that you have to take a market order. Uh, you can put in a formula to calculate what is the option price, but typically the option price is not very close to what uh, Black Shows formula gives for you. So, you know, you it's always better to take the market order. If your strategy is good enough, it will still make you money. But the key is that uh, you need to be aware of some of the challenges that will come in if you're using a market order versus, uh, you know, a limit order. Okay, what else? So like even this one is a, a gap strategy, but again, based on uh, market orders. So I think this one was a stop loss. Uh, and, and they don't always take uh, all the entries and exits. So like this was a gap. It entered over here and took the first profit, second profit, and that's it. You know, there's nothing else that the strategy will do. So, but the next day, uh, it had multiple stops. So, you know, you really need to figure out what you're trying to do with the strategy. And uh, most of these strategies work in tandem with uh, a lot of other strategies. So like over here, it entered first, second, end of story. And because I'm not watching it every time, I don't really care whether it's taking a trade uh, on all scenarios or not. What I really look at is uh, uh, what is my expect, uh, uh, so, uh, strategy tester. Yeah, uh, so what is the expectancy that I have from this particular trade? Sorry, why is it this? Uh, yeah. So this one is probably not making me a profit this year, uh, the gap strategy, uh, let me see. If but yeah, uh, historically it has, probably right now it has not. So like this one uh, on Bank Nifty is doing much better than uh, what it is doing on Nifty. So you need to probably figure out and make sure that uh, you have a range of strategies that you use to be able to uh, you know have an equity curve that keeps rising. Okay. Uh, I'll stop over here and see if there are any more questions uh, that I can take uh, before we close for the sir, day. Just one question, sir. Can we see a RS line in the trading view? Yes, you can. So if you come over here, you go to. Because I never find any indicator for the RS line. Yeah, that is actually the community script, and that's the challenge. Uh, you can look at this as an RS line. The difference is that you'll have to come over here and change SPX to Nifty. Okay, and uh, whatever stock you pick up on top, so suppose you pick up HDFC Bank. Okay, so this is the RS of HDFC Bank versus the Nifty. You can change that over here. You can plot anything else. Let's let this remove. So this is RS of Nifty and uh, HGFC Bank. Okay. So the one that you need to use is uh, this, uh, sorry. Yeah, relative, not this index, uh, but uh, one of these relative strengths. I, I, I hope that was the, your question, right? You want to see- yes, the sir. One versus the other because i saw somewhere on the google while i was trying to look for they said like you can type the security name 
slash and the index or any other security which you wanted to compare on the find side. But I tried doing that and it didn't show me that fast. So that was what we just did. So if you want to do bank nifty over SDFC bank, uh, let me see if it's coming up. So that's what we just uh, saw with nifty and bank nifty on how, uh, you know, you can put two securities, but yeah. if you just want to see SDFC bank versus, uh, bank nifty as an RS, then you need to plot it like this. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? What is the use of flagging a symbol? Like you have uh, flagged SDFC bank with a green symbol, mm -hmm. with a green flag. Right. Uh, what is the meaning or how do we use that? Okay, good point. Uh, so over here, I've basically flagged all the symbols uh, one way or the other. It's basically based on what, uh, you know, my last research was on this particular one. And uh, I have a particular uh, way to tag each of the symbols, depending on what my thought is in terms of what that stock will be doing. So if it's something that I'm tracking, but it's not in my buy list, then I would probably plot it differently. If I it is something that I feel is close to a breakout, then I'll plot it differently. Um, so that that's basically, you can just right click over here and figure out what is the flag that you want to use. Does that help? Uh, Mitesh, if I'm uh, adding, uh, selecting a stock in a uh, watch list, suppose say if I'm selecting 15 minutes and if I'm changing the period to day, then the chart is not adjusting correctly. So I have to again go back to the previous script and again I have to come back to the new selector script. So then only it is coming like that. I don't know where the setting is wrong in that. So what what is not adjusting in the chart? So uh, if, it, if it is in 15 minutes, right? If I scroll down to daily, uh, if I change it to daily, Mm -hmm. adjusting here it is uh, perfect. But in my view, it is not coming. So I have to come to Hero Motors or uh, uh, top one and again I have to come back to HDFC life then only it is adjusting okay like because that. because uh, you need to use option R or alt R if you are on uh, a Windows machine then uh, it should rescale itself just try doing that alt R that's it yes okay. so if you change from five minute to probably one day yeah yeah exactly now it is fine yeah yeah, yeah. perfect perfect yeah okay. Okay. thank you very much how do we buy data and integrate it with trading view let me just see if uh, i can show it to you over here explore or uh, available markets and then over here you can actually see uh, which are the ones the data that uh, you know trading view provides and I don't know how to buy it though, but uh, these are the various uh, uh, exchanges for which you can uh, buy data. Okay. Okay, and then you come here, which whichever one. So suppose I want to select something for India. I think it was... Okay, now you can go to BSC and you can get it for 425 rupees a month. Now you can even get an annual plan for 5,000. After this, uh, after subscribing to this, uh, we'll have full data, right? You'll have uh, BSC data real time. The way no, you I'm have... saying initially when we tried to back test on a one minute time frame, we had only one year's data. But after subscribing to this, we'll have full data, right? No, uh, you will not get full data. So that data that you're talking about in the back test is valid for a certain number of bars. Okay, so it will only give you, suppose, 10,000 bars on the plan that you have. I think it should be listed somewhere over here. Uh, okay, yeah, historical bars, depending on the plan, you can get 10,000 bars if you take the basic plan. Sorry, essential plan. If you are on premium, you can get uh, 20,000 bars. 
if you go to some of the higher plans, you can get 40,000 bars, which means that, you know, if uh, the one minute time frame is giving you one year worth of data, you know, on 40,000, it will give you four years worth of data. Okay, that's one thing. Uh, when I, I'm talking about uh, the data plan that is over here, basically uh, what we discussed was BSC data is delayed by 15 minutes on trading view. So this will give you real time data so that you can actually use that uh, data point to even use in uh, your intraday trading, which you cannot do on BSC because uh, the uh, data that is coming in trading view is actually delayed. So it will not change the number of bars that you'll get, but you'll get real time data. It's, it will not be delayed by 15 minutes. So is there a way to, uh test a strategy on the entire data set instead of limiting ourselves on bars. That's what you need to buy that data for from different vendors, right? So that, that's where they make the money and TradingView is able to give it to you for, uh, you know, they will also be able to give you more paid data, uh, which I haven't explored. But, uh, you know, if you want to do back test on uh, a data set that's much larger than what is available for your plan, you can obviously uh, reach out to a data vendor to get that data for you. So can you tell us some name? How will we reach out? Like we don't know any data vendor. Uh, so with, I know you had some names, right? Uh, uh, basically, if you are looking for Indian markets, then uh, the best uh, data provider, which at least I have the experience with is uh, uh, global uh, data feeds. Okay, you can Google go global data feeds. You would get that. Uh, basically, for uh, EOD data, they will charge you say around ten thousand rupees a year. For uh, intraday data, you they will charge you something around uh, say twenty five thousand rupees for one segment. One segment means uh, your uh, either cash market or FNO market, okay, or MCX, okay, any one uh, segment. It they'll charge you around twenty five thousand rupees. Approximately, they may have increased the price because the last which I deal with them was around, say, eight nine months back. Okay, and if you take two segments, then it will like you'll get some discount, maybe a uh, ten percent discount here and there. You'll get okay, but again, that data you'll get it from today onwards. You'll not get uh, say two uh, too much long data. So maybe six months data you'll get. Uh, but beyond that, you will not get data with uh, with them. So you know, for that, you have to buy the data separately, historical data separately from them. Okay, historical data is a challenge. Uh, if you are not maintaining it in the past, then it's a challenge. It, it's a real challenge to get that data. And it will be very, very costly. For each year, they will charge you uh, a very big amount. Okay, it will be per year, uh, how many years you want, they will charge you based on that. Okay, uh, if you really want uh, like one minute data and uh, this uh, uh, one minute data and you, even EOD data, another option you have is e-signal. E-signal is uh, like little costly. It will be around $130 a month, but uh, you will get uh, for, uh, I think for EOD data, you will get almost 20 years of data. So from 2001, so you will get the bigger data also, but from 2001, you can say that it is clean data. Okay. Um, one minute data, you will get uh, maximum, I think, uh, from 2013 or 2015, somewhere there. Okay, one minute data, you will get from them. And even if you subscribe uh, today, you will get the old data. You get the backfill done. But no other data provider, I don't think, will give you backfill data. So the best thing what you can do is that at least take one month of e-signal data for $130. And in one in that one month, download all the data, whatever you can. Okay. Uh, so that uh, will resolve your issue. And uh, But for that, uh, yes, downloading also, they may have now put some restrictions. Okay. Previously, they didn't have any restrictions. Now, maybe they have added some restrictions. The newer version of eSignal may have some restrictions. Okay, uh, but we can do that easily in ME Broker. Okay, ME Broker, uh, that uh, data gets downloaded easily. Yeah. So I've been using ME Broker for almost uh, six, seven years now, maybe eight years now. 
uh, and I'm using e signal since then. Okay, it's it's my favorite uh, this thing. Uh, uh, every day I run that my systems on that only e signal data. Uh, the only thing is that uh, this it will be delayed by five minutes. Okay, there's that is one concern that it is uh, say if you want to have real time, then uh, what you have to do is that I think there is there is even additional charge for that. Uh, I think two thousand two hundred dollars or something is there for live data. Okay, but the best part is that you'll get multiple uh, exchanges. You you don't need to worry about exchanges. Uh, other than few exchanges, you'll get US market, you'll get Indian market, you'll get many other markets. Okay, even even uh, MCX and uh, 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 Chicago uh, exchange, you'll get uh, data in one one uh, fee only. So the best thing, what but the problem with e signal is that its interface is not very user friendly. Okay, so even to know the symbols, what is there for which uh, it's a challenge. Okay, it will not easily give you like any uh, this uh, reading is very easy in identifying symbols, right? Mm -hmm. uh, e signal is not that easy to identify which symbol belongs to which. So there's so many symbols, so many uh exchanges okay and you'll have to understand the this thing so maybe one month if you sit full day and night then only you'll be able to get whatever you want okay it won't be easy uh, in one month to get all the data and there's so much data in it uh it's like ocean of data oh yeah so yeah if you go down that part i think there's a lot that needs to be done uh but uh thanks for that so with uh Yes, um, I think uh, for most of my trading, uh, the data that TradingView provides is enough. So I, I don't use more than a lower than a 15 minute time frame for most of the commodities, etc. Uh, so yeah, uh, 20,000 bars on that is good enough uh, data point for me to take a look at what my strategy is doing. So uh, that's the way I look at it. But yes, if you are interested in getting more data, there is a cost uh, with that. In some cases for options, uh, I have now built something on Python that is saving real-time data for me. So over the next six months, I'll at least have six months worth of data, probably, you know, uh, continue uh, downloading that uh, real-time from, from the market. So so sometimes you just have to do that uh, uh, manually and build that uh, data over a period of time because end of the day, uh, if you are trading, this is something that is long-term and you'd want to continue being in the market. So whenever you start, uh, you know, that's the best time for you to start collecting the data that you can for yourself. Hi, uh, I have a question. Like, is there any, is there any specific reason why trading view does not provide option charts? Like, uh, I suppose a lot of people must have requested trading view, like to please provide because uh, we also need, like, we also use VWAP and all those indicators on underlines, but uh, uh, TradingView somehow does not provide the option chart. Is there any specific reason behind that, which you are aware of? Uh, it's just the sheer number of symbols uh, that uh, are there uh, on the option chart. But if uh, you've explored uh, FIRES, the uh, interface uh, of FIRES chart the same as trading view uh, as a broker they provide the option charts in a similar layout to trading view you cannot use uh fine strip strategies on that but uh from a trading point of view it provides most of the tools uh, that are there you can see most of the strategies and uh, just uh, check that out uh, that should narrow down a lot of the challenges that you're facing uh, with options uh, charts and options data uh, because that is the one that I've seen most closely working uh, as per trading view. And for most of my own option trading, I use FIRES rather than uh, any of the other brokers because uh, the layout is very similar and trading view is something that I'm comfortable with. So it's easier for me to execute options trade on that one versus the other brokers. Thank you. So we can get these charts uh, uh, like in trading view. Like entire thing will be user interface will be like trading view only in Quantsap, this option charts. Correct. Yeah. Quantsap also has integration with likewise. You're right. Yes. We can also get, uh, get option charts of each Greek, like 
if you want to see only delta you can plot that chart also in correct yeah answer yeah in concept you can i think concept uh, i don't remember uh, but the last time i checked the subscription was for, for what 12000 per month or something but just check that out i think that is helpful so if uh, you know that is something that uh, works for you see there are different ways to skin this cat right the ways to make money in the market through fundamentals uh, you know through technicals through you know uh, manual trading versus algo trading there are different ways to do it my uh, suggestion to all of you would be to explore what uh, whatever comes your way but stick with the one that works for you okay uh, any other questions sir uh, once we start this session on trading view how many uh, like how many days will it continue look what what will be the tentative uh, schedule on on pine script i'm looking at about uh, 8 to 10 classes which would mean about uh, uh, about a month month and half at the max so if we do classes on saturday and sunday uh, it would be 8 to 10 classes which is about which is about five weeks maybe uh, sir one uh, question which i have in mind for a very long period of time but uh, it is not connected to this particular webinar so i don't know if it's right to ask but uh, see uh, dow jones spot market opens for about six or seven hours right but dow jones futures uh, uh, work for around 18 hours so how do they drive the prices of future and options in Dow Jones when the spot market is closed for like 10 hours? So how do they drive the prices of futures when the spot markets are closed? Like uh, for futures, spot markets are the underlines. So how do futures uh, prices are drive when the spots are closed? Uh, I, I, this question has been bothering me for more than I like uh, two years, but I am not able to find the answer for this. I agree this, is, this question is not related to this webinar, but I just thought you might be aware about this thing, sir. Right. So, so that is a... how is that question different from, uh, you know, gift, uh, you know, gift Nifty or uh, sorry, SGX Nifty? Yeah, this this uh, this also applies to this all okay. those future. But uh, this is what I want to understand: like, how do they price? How do they derive the price of futures when the spot markets are not working, sir? This Correct. question, oh. you know, always is bothering me, sir. So uh, uh, news happens even when the market is closed. Okay, so uh, the prices are derived from what is happening across the globe. How are other markets behaving? How are other markets reacting? Uh, and based on that, people anticipate what will happen to the spot prices the next day. And most of the movement actually happens on news that is coming through in the other markets. Um, and then, uh, you know, once the spot markets open, either the, spot, uh, the future price is correct or the spot prices come in line with the future prices if there's an actual event that will drive the spot prices. But Thank end you. of the day, uh, you trade the prices on uh, the index that you're tracking rather than the future prices. So yeah, don't stay up late uh, watching what Dow Jones and Dow Jones future is doing, uh, trade what the Indian markets are doing. Uh, will that clash with the CMT classes? No, uh, we will do it uh, after the CMT. Uh, you know cmt classes are over and after the cmt exams we want to ensure that folks who are a part of the cmt are able to first uh, focus on the exams and then come in for the pine uh, pine strip class so it will be only after 17th of june correct uh around one month before the uh, classes start this uh, workshop starts we will inform you uh, whoever is interested, uh, uh, we will, any which is who, whoever has joined this uh, webinar or have enrolled for this webinar, we'll send an emails, email to all of them. Again, anybody who is interested can join. So you will get information, okay, uh, when this uh, is going to start, at least one month before the uh, uh, this web, uh, workshop starts with all the information which is required. Perfect. Thanks, so we, we actually decided uh, this webinar only for our students uh, of Yuba, but then we thought that let's do it for everybody who whoever is interested, okay, so that uh, everybody gets the benefit for whatever it can be. Okay, we have still not, uh, in fact, finalized also the dates of the uh, file script uh, workshop, 
but uh, this this was not the plan to uh, launch the pine step workshop uh, this thing right the plan was not there so we are just informing that we will be coming up with it that's it perfect i think there's one question uh around am i a systematic uh, algo trader or discretionary i'm systematic uh completely systematic even the stocks that i pick are systematic i just uh, trade them manually as in uh, you know i take those trades uh, at the next days uh, open uh, but the stocks come up through an algo that i've built okay uh okay i think that's uh, it well, one one last question uh, currently you see uh, there is one competition going on trading view so yeah, ten thousand dollar one yeah yeah ten thousand dollars so i was trying to means automate the trades but i'm not able to automate means in the this paper trading account so is there any way to automate the trades uh no you can't automate that on the paper trading account uh you have to use a uh, web hook that i showed you mm -hmm. To actually trade on the broker platform so obviously that will not qualify uh for uh okay uh, trading, on, uh, trading view but uh yes you can automate your trade but uh, not through uh the paper trading or even through the broker integration uh you know broker integration will help you take manual trades mm -hmm. uh, sometimes when you integrate your broker you'll have buy and sell buttons on the chart itself that you can buy and sell through mm -hmm. uh, but that will not automate the trade for automating, you have to build the strategy that will then use the webhook to generate the trade on your broker platform. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, we'll like to thank uh, Mitesh uh, for uh, contributing so, so much of our time, almost four hours. This has been uh, there. Okay, so thanks, Mitesh. Uh, and uh, for this wonderful webinar, I, I was there on, on the, the entire webinar, okay, and I liked it a lot. And I'll have to re, re see it because some parts uh, I missed because of my this uh, speaker was not working, okay. Anyways, uh, thanks a lot for uh, uh, coming, everybody, okay, and uh, we'll continue with the CMD classes uh, in Yuba as we do, okay. Thanks, everyone, and thanks for your time. Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, you know, I hope you get something out of uh, this uh, webinar and happy trading. Thank you so much, sir. And I think it was a very detailed session and you can never find such material on YouTube or wherever you Google it out. So I don't think any any material is so comprehensive as you have uh, you know, elaborated today. Thank you so much for your knowledge and sharing. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thanks. And uh, another thing is that uh, recordings, uh, it will take some time for Zoom to process the recording. It will take at least four, five hours. Okay. So maybe by uh, tomorrow, you should get the recordings. So what we'll do is that we will upload this on a private uh, YouTube, uh, this thing. Okay. YouTube private, uh, it will be private. And the link will be shared to all those who have registered for the webinars. Okay.